90 degree circular shuffle. So from my fighting stance, what I want to do is start to teach uh, my students how to move from one side or the other. So for example, if somebody's coming straight at me, I can't always just be backing up or using my fade. Okay? That distance is finite. I'll end up running into the ropes or running into the cage. So I need to make sure that my movement is lateral most of the time. So when my opponent's coming at me, what I want to do is change at a 90 degree angle uh, from 12 o'clock to say three or from 12 to say nine. So from this position here, I'm going to step and shuffle out one, two, and face my opponent at a 90 degree angle. So the footwork for that is the right leg needs to move forward or, or sorry, needs to move further. My left will make a step. My right comes step and come a little bit smoother, getting out to the side. If I'm going to go to the other side, I'm here. My right foot's going to step one, two, coming out to the side. And that's a 90 degree circular shuffle, 90 degree circular shuffle with a fake. So the idea is, is that we're trying to get our opponent to move with us with exaggerated head movement or slightly exaggerated head movement. So from this position, if I actually want to move to my right, I'm going to fake to my left first. So I do my footwork and possibly a little bit of a step to move off to this side. If my opponent reacts and starts facing that direction, when I turn and go out this way, I've now exposed more of their side. So 90 degree circular shuffle with the fake. I fake one direction. I hope they bite. So I'm into my forward bow, possibly with a light step. And I pivot both my feet. And my lead foot ends up being the driving foot as it pivots. And I get out to the side. Knees are bent. If I'm here, I fake. Double up cut kicks. So when I'm striking my opponent, I'll usually throw my first one very, very quickly and not land all the way back. I'll throw that kick, drop my leg forward and fire again. Now the whole purpose of that is, is that maybe I throw that first kick and they check. So I brought, I bring my foot back and throw again to try and land it. So for example, if I'm facing my opponent and I throw a kick at their leg, they check it. As soon as they bring that leg down, I'm trying to cut it again. So I'm a poor example of how to do the splits, but the idea of it being is we have supported and unsupported. So supported meaning we'd put our hands on the ground. Unsupported means you'd go to your side splits as far as you can, just uncomfortably. So your split shouldn't be painful. It should be just uncomfortable. And you're trying to go it as far as you can without putting your hands on the ground, which will also keep your posture significantly straighter and get a little bit of a deeper stretch into your hips. So the idea of doing a side split with your weight unsupported you might not be able to go down as far because you don't have that safety net of having your hands supported, but make sure you mix it up every once in a while in your training to do supported and unsupported side splits. Full plum is a type of a Muay Thai clinch. Uh, a lot of people get the full plum confused with regular Thai clinch and they're not the same. The full plum is when I get my hands together with my gloves on and I'm kind of pointing my fingers up like this. So if I clinch them, turning my palms to face me with my fingers up like this, even with the gloves on, and I'm trying to reef down and push in with my forearms and elbows to get that head folded over. And then I would switch to tie clinch and start getting my opponent folded over or hinged at the hip. Full plumb. Guys, we have a separate video for our fight hand wrap. Just check the description and we'll put a link in there for it. All right, guys, so now we're gonna learn how to use the tie clinch, well, rather full plumb to tie clinch to apply our skip knees. So if I'm working with my opponent and I want to break him down, get that full plumb happening, switch to my tie clinch. Now, if I want to throw knees in succession with each other, just like if I'm going to throw a jab cross, there needs to be a rotation or a loading. With the knee, the basic load is knee, drop, slide. I'm sliding the opposite leg. So one more time, full plumb gets the neck down. Tie clinch gets their hips hinged out. That's when we start drilling with our knees 
our skip knee program. You'd very rarely in a real fight land more than two or three of those in a row. And if you did, that's very, very lucky. It's a good thing, just keep going. But the idea of those skip knees is to get the hands, or excuse me, the legs rolling in succession, throwing them as a combo. Our front break fall. Imagine someone shoved you from behind. You want to absorb as much of that momentum as possible by exaggerating, bringing your hands out like this. And I can stop some of that forward momentum. And it helps me drop to my knees as well. So I'll show it from the side. If I'm here, and let's say I was getting swept or pushed in a fight and I'm, I need to fall forward like that, I don't want to go like this. The whole idea of it being is absorb as much momentum as possible. I'm here. And then the knees drop here. From this position, I'm here. And make sure that you roll up to guard. Okay, don't stay on your stomach. I'll do it from the front. If I'm here, and I could roll out either side. And that's a front break fall with a rollout. How to check a front kick or a teep kick. From my fighting stance, I would check a roundhouse out at an angle. To check the front kick, if I had enough distance, I would tuck my knee in and bring my head in tight and block straight from the front, hoping to catch the bottom of the foot. If I'm here, So bringing that check straight forward. Blocking the front kick. If I'm here, that kick is coming in, I'm gonna shuffle away from it. So if he's throwing his power side at me, I block, I block. You could add the catch to it if you want but I'm moving my body out of the way of it and blocking to hit that leg offline. That's blocking a front kick. All right, guys, let's talk about our double up cut kicks. So when facing my heavy bag or my opponent, I throw my first strike and I land forward and quickly execute my second strike. So from here, and I might throw my first one a little bit quicker to see how the reaction is. And if I can land my second one, I might throw it with a little bit more power. So a double up cut kick.